Amen. Let us stand in reverence to the word as we're going to go to the book of James chapter one. We're going to go verses one through four. Uh, when you get it, give me a still saved. If you are on that uh, Zoom, uh, you can just do the thumbs up emoji. If you are calling in, uh, you can just yell st still saved and we will spiritually hear you. While you are looking, there have been changes in our technological status. There is now a TV screen here in the pulpit. And uh, I find myself continuing to look at it and recognize that I may need a stylist now. Because I don't like how I'm looking. Amen. 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 Let me say also. And our desire, one of our conversations here is in our desire to reach out to young people. Uh, when they do Zoom, they do it by video. And we are still at a point where we are calling in and still trying to reach out to people, uh, to young people who know Zoom very well. They deal with it. on where We have now teachers meetings on Zoom, teacher parent meetings on Zoom. Our encouragement is that we upgrade in technology because uh, it is also a way in which to be able to reach our young people and that we don't criticize them. I can reach my son on his phone very well. Uh, in fact, we may be on two floors. He'll talk to me better on the phone <laughs> than face to face. So uh, these are things which I hope we as a church, uh, uh, because they will want to see your faces. Uh, and not just see a name. So I pray that we be able to do this and I can get through this TV screen that's on my right hand side. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read this and you'll follow along with me. It says, greeting to the 12 tribes, James, a bond servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. To the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings, profiting from trials. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Amen. Uh, Lord, I bless into the reading and hearing of his most holy word, and you may be seated in the house of the Lord. Our sermonic theme today is Christmas patience. Uh, on our previous lesson, we uh, our, our Christmas word was hope. Uh, on this lesson, the word is patience. And, and I, I, I want to say this here that, that I, I hope that we preach from and we learn the Bible from its entirety as we see different uh, themes that run through the entire canon. I'm glad that the Bible is not just one word, that it's not just one feeling, that it's not just one theme, but that it has so much for so many different uh, challenges that we have in our lives. Now, in focusing on patience, it, 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 it can mean that having this look of admiration, you know, we can have this uh, going from Christmas to Christmas. When we finish one Christmas, it's almost like uh, my kids are ready for the next Christmas, right? And we, and we ourselves, whether we admit it or not, inside, just in living, we may, we may feel this, but not say it, Lord, I'm just trying to get to the next Christmas, right? It's, 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 a, it's a milestone for us, right? Somebody passes before Christmas. It is a, a huge, uh, a dagger in the heart. Like, gosh, just a couple more weeks, they would have made Christmas, right? Right. It, it is that thing. It's that uh, it is that thing. And, 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 and saints 
when they just encounter struggle or trials, we just, we just may, we may not articulate it verbally, but we feel it spiritually. Lord, I just trying to get to Christmas. Give me one more Christmas. It, there is an audacity in our living that declares at the very least, I just want another December. But patience is needed right, to get there. And, 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 and that's where patience becomes a gift because we can get to the point where we want to throw in the towel and give up. But it's a sense, Christmas, it's a sense, or so getting there is, it, 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 it invigorates us, right? Just to be able to see the lights that come up again and be able to celebrate uh, as a church family again, just one more Christmas. Now, now patience-wise, now, scripturally, church, please know that it's nothing new. One can remember the journey of the Hebrew children and their 40 year exodus you know to the promised land patience was involved or 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 who can forget the great biblical proclamation of uh of uh isaiah uh 40 uh that says but they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up like wings on an eagle they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint it is a, that was a proclamation to a people who had become displaced from their homeland, who were dealing with trials and, and tribulations with their overseer, and they needed a word of hope that says, wait on the Lord, be patient. This, this first chapter of, 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 of James uh, intensifies it. Be, it. It is huge as far as our culture because due to the trials and tribulations which we have faced, this chapter as a whole has been a huge source of, of comfort. James 1 and 8, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. James 1, 1 and 12, blessed is a man that endureth temptation for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. James 1 and 17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the father of lights with whom is no variableness neither shadow of turning james 1 and 22 but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves the thematic pursuit of patience right is encompassed in the evangelist james believing that waiting will create a sense of perfection that if we give it time it will work out in the better way than if we rush it right so it, it takes an opportunity to allow a, a a patience waiting that that we wait for will be revealed and that what is revealed will be of great appreciation we'll appreciate it better by the way yeah, look, when, when, when uh, 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 elders or uh, seniors in our family, uh, when we uh, were, you know, were bold enough to sit there, right, and, and learn to cook uh, from them, uh, or, or I remember sitting under my, my uncle, uh, who was just the greatest uh, barbecue guy on the south side that was unknown, right? And he was, uh, and he would, and he would barbecue. And and I, I remember, I remember uh, uh, just, just saying, "Okay, Unc, I'm gonna barbecue with you." And that experience wore me out. Just the smoke that kept coming in the face was crazy, you know. And I, I remember, you know, you know, with the sauce. Remember to say, you need these ingredients, right? You need these uh, ingredients to baby, you need this mixture, you need to let this set out. But the main ingredient, whether my uncle gave it to me, whether my grandmother gave it to me, whether my mother gave it to me, the main ingredients was not on the menu. It was patience. That was it. It was patience. It was patience. It was patience. Uh, 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 they were, uh, I had just this emotional experience at the last um at the last boy scout uh, camp you know i still retain my vegan lifestyle and they they cooked church 
a whole pig, right? They they cooked a whole pig, and the way they had that pig on that grill, I walked by, and I, I was the only one saying out loud, I'm sorry for what they did to you, Mr. Pig. This was so wrong, what they did to you and how these scouts were running around eating, right? But the, uh, 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 you know, but when they were cooking it, it was the desire for the scouts to keep pulling the uh, door up so they could see. And, uh, and the scout master said, if you looking, then it's not cooking, right? If you looking, then it's not cooking. But it was patient. They had to start it early in the morning in order to be able to get the right flavor, the right time. And so, and, and the challenge for us becomes, can you wait for this moment of perfection, right? Who will sacrifice and, and, and hold off for their own desires, right? And, and, and who will sacrifice and, and, and shun the mediocre, right? And grab on to the perfection, right? Will you settle because of impatience or will you give it your best with your waiting? Right now, that's the challenge now, because this culture, westernized culture is a fast paced culture. We don't want to wait for nothing that has been the rise, good or bad, of fast food. This kind of culture can grow businesses such like this. And I find myself being caught up into it. Do I want to park, run in and get the good food from this restaurant or do I want to roll through the drive through? Right. We end up rolling through the drive through, right? In order to be able to get the quickness because we don't have patience. We don't even want to wait in line no more, right? If the line is too long, we'll leave the place. But it stems from the have it your way kind of mentality. If something does not happen when we want it to happen, how we want it to happen, we become impatient. Right, right, right. Our youth here, I was talking about them earlier, they have access to so much more than we had just a generation ago, but their access to information, right, and this quickness has made them impatient just to be kids. And in the same sense, from a senior and from us, we become impatient because we don't have the patience to learn what they're learning. Right? Yep, it's too much. Right? We got, we got several of you in here with smartphones, right? You don't have to call in. You can get on video. Computers are the cheapest that they have ever been, right? Some of us still got the old school where you need, like where you need a cart just to pick up the, the hard drive, right? Right? But will you even invest in it in order to reach out to be able to talk to them? Or do, you, or do you say, I don't have the patience to learn that? Then you don't have the patience to connect because that's what it takes. I can tell you what it takes as a parent, right? You also, as a church, what will it take? Look, we went to Disney World, right? We about to get on a ride. Those of you who have taken your families down there, you know what I'm talking about. You get up to the sign and say, you, it's going to be 40 minutes, right? This line is going to be 40 minutes before you get on the ride. The first thing we say, man, I'm not waiting in line no 40 minutes. Let's go find another ride that we don't have to wait in line for 40 minutes. By the time we find the other ride, right, right we could have waited in the 40-minute line. Because it took us almost that amount of time to find another comparable ride. And then we stand in that line and it takes longer, right? Because the time we took to find it, the time now we got to stand in line. And if we say we're not going to do it, we're going to go back to the first place. We've lost the place where we would have been. But if we had patience, I'd have been riding on the ride by now. Right? So the scripture now here gives us the insight into patience. The scripture is a warning about life. It's an indication that trials and tribulations will come in life. This is definitely a letter of comfort as much as it is an indictment, but it's a comfort to Christians, early Christians 
but living right comes with its set of difficulties. The scripture now speaks to trials and tribulations, right? Patience then becomes a necessity for endurance, but also to produce a better outcome. Patience can be the only alternative, right, to producing patience. Lack of patience produces a rushed outcome, right? And then imperfection, and the meal does not taste as good. I'm going back to the elders in our family. They had the patience. My uncle had the patience to buy the meat. Get the meat ready. Let it simmer. Uh, and my uncle wasn't just cooking for him, right? This is old school, but the whole family bring their own meat over to cook, right? But everything had to cook the same, right? So, so we have to be careful here, right? right? That we recognize our impatience. What is it that we cannot do or what do we settle on, right, that cannot be done, right? Parenting, those of you who have been parents, right, right, or still our parents requires some patience. Lord, no, it does, right? I always said, I said, I was talking to, you know, I was talking to an Uber driver and uh, uh, he was criticizing his child, you know, and all the things because in the pandemic, right, that pushed us all at home. And when you're looking at somebody all day, you find more problems with them, right? I can't believe your socks are not matching. How long have your socks not been matching, right? So you tend to judge because you're looking at people all the time. So then you get concerned, oh gosh, now she ain't gonna even get in Harvard because her shoes are not tied, right? Patience, right? So, so here then, how do you have patience? You must realize that life is not a sprint. It's a marathon, right? Marathon is a, is, a, is a growing popular sport. I have a lot of friends now who approaching 50, their goal was I'm gonna run a marathon, right? It's a sport that all can do. And, and because many times it's not a matter of winning, it's just a matter of finishing, right? Marathon challenges the runner to stay committed, to keep the same pace, even though the difficulties in the course change. It's a mindset of finishing while having endurance, right? That's what it is. Life is that marathon. When we started running, I'm willing to bet we had no idea what we were gonna deal with in the race. We just didn't. You can check all of my essays that I wrote in, in, uh, in grammar school and in high school. None of them said, I'm gonna be a preacher in Seattle. Not one, not one of them. Not one of them mentioned the West Coast. We had cousins in California, but nothing up here in the Northwest, right? Life gives us those, those twists and those turns but can you still stay focused and run the race, right? Now you have to be careful here because 24 hours in each day, each day can be long and grueling, especially if you're going through something. Heartbreak can bring you great pain. It can interrupt your work and your mind can be preoccupied, excuse me, with the pain. But as time goes on, the pain becomes less and you learn to live and deal with it. But you got to be patient in order to let yourself heal and get through the process. Because if not, you'll be terrible to the next person, right? Because you haven't allowed yourself to be healed. You'll be in a rush, you'll be impatient. Oh, I got to get into this next relationship when you're not ready because you haven't had patience, okay? We talked about this, raising children, it takes patience. You can't sprint with a child, a parent, never stops being a parent. A child can have difficulty in the beginning, but can turn out to be God's greatest testimony. But you gotta be patient with it, right? Right, nobody, nobody, when you first held that child, however you came in contact with that child, patience was gonna be a part of the journey. 
Okay. Now, let me say this. Even in the church, you got to be patient. We now here at church are, are trying to embark upon the journey of reaching out to more youth. That's going to take some patience. It's going to take some ego removal, right? It's going to take some, some serious, strong discussions, right? But it's going to take patience because we don't want something quick. We're not looking for a fad. We're looking for a building for the future, right? It'll take, it'll take patience. We have, we, have, we have several ministries that can, that can jump to prominence so quick, several churches, but then fall because they lack the patience to persevere. They rush the process and it's asked why we ask for patience on the journey, whether it be a building project with the Nehemiah, whether it be me even giving the offer for you to come back in and come back to the sanctuary, patience. Okay. With even the challenge of the pandemic, patience allows you to be able to enjoy the ride. I think it should be a requirement that all people take at least one cross country drive per year, right? Wouldn't that be something, right? My wife and I, we drove across country as part of our um, as part of our honeymoon. We got a chance to slow down and see the beauty of the country. When we take the airplane, we don't see nothing. Right? All we see is other people on the plane who don't have no mask on. <laughs> Whose vaccination statuses we don't know. Right? Right? That's why those who have thoughts for business ideas or books to write or new nonprofits, you can't quit after the first turn down or sign of trouble. You'd be able to look back on it and laugh about the bad times and enjoy the, the successes of the later, of the latter, but you have to be patient, right? You can't give up in the process, right? We talked about this with marriages, relationships, it, you got to be patient. Marriage, a requirement for marriage is definitely patience. You got two people coming from two different thought processes, families, avenues, patience. Right? Finally, this year, you can be proud of the end result with patience. Proverbs 19 and 11 says that a man's wisdom gives him patience. A person with true patience has a view of the end of the end result, right? And those of you worked, uh, I think I have attended several of your retirement uh, ceremonies, right? Uh, 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 and but one thing I got from it is, gosh, that must have taken patience, right? To go through, even if you got grief, to still have to get up on Monday morning and and walk in that thing. That take, that take patience. The same, the people change. The people who was there when your journey started, they probably ain't even there no more. But you still coming through. You've got to do day in and day out. And Lord Jesus, if you managing people, right? It's going to take patience. <coughs> All right, I think I'm preaching Deacon Turner's sermon. Cause he almost at the end of his road. He ain't said he getting close to retirement and he going to be a young retiree. Amen. Right. 40. I'm sorry. I heard you say it. 41 years at Boeing. Amen. It's time for the boy to come home. All right. But the same thing here. Be patient with church life. Be patient with biblical, uh, uh, a spiritual life. Right. That's what it's going to take, right? Patience comes from verses such as trust in the Lord, lean not to your own understanding. All that ways acknowledge him and he will guide your paths, right? That's what it's going to take. Here, let me finish with this. I, 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 I told you uh, uh, late uh, Judge Haley, uh, one of the stories that he liked for me uh, to tell, he would tell me about 
how my grandparents in Chicago purchased their home years ago, right? And the home, we still have ownership of the home, even though my grandparents have passed on. And actually, rest me, I'm just, I heard my, one of my aunts just passed a couple of days ago. And so my mother had, there were six of them. And now we are down to, I hate to say down to two, but I have two aunties that are living, right? But after all these years, we still got the house, right? Okay. But look what they did. They saved their money for a down payment on a home. They didn't have the money for a down, uh, uh, for a mortgage. They saved. They bought a home that had a, a, a four apartments in it and a basement on the south side of Chicago, right? Both of my grandparents deceased, right? Whenever one of the children or grandchildren get into tough places, right? Right now, right now, I told, I told my wife, if we hit Skid Row, there's a place in Chicago that no matter how embarrassed and low I will feel, we got a place to stay, okay? Place to stay. My grandparents did that. I don't know if they saw the bigger vision. I don't know what they did, but they paid into it year after year, right? Now we should say this here. I'm glad God have enough patience with me, right? He stuck with me through times where I didn't even acknowledge him and stuck with you when you didn't even acknowledge him. In our sinful self, Right, but we were out there not even looking or giving the church a chance. Right, God still had patience with us. Right, right, right. I I know all that. We sing those great lyrics. Please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. But when God gets through with me, when God gets through with me, I shall come forth. I shall come forth like pure gold. That's it, church. That's what, that's what the patience that God have with us, surely we can have with each other. In the midst of our imperfections, in the midst of our ups and downs, still we can make a claim, right? That I'm not perfect, right? But the Lord is still with me, just as the Lord is with you. Now, he can have patience with us, certainly, right? We can have patience for him. Amen. Come on, let's praise God for his holy word.